Monkeys. Many scientists would describe them as humanity's predecessors, but to me, they are the pinnacle of evolution. Monkeys really do have it all. They can swing, they can dance, they can spin really well. Some of them can even make pancakes. Is there anything they can't do? Today, I will be testing that theory to the limit, as I attempt to make the perfect monkey within the life simulation game, Spore. In this experiment, I will be constructing my research around quite possibly the most prestigious ranking system the world has to offer, the official monkey tier list. I plan to move up this tier list one by one, with the eventual goal of creating a monkey powerful enough for world domination. Without further ado, I loaded up Spore and got to work. Many people don't know this, but monkeys actually initially came from the ocean. Once out of the sea though, it was time to get started on the monkey tier list. Sadly, Francine from the TV show Arthur and also Curious George find themselves at the bottom of this tier list because those guys are way too human-like, and quite honestly, I don't even believe they're real. As a result, I will instead be starting with the Gibbon. Gibbons are most famous for their long arms, an ability to go whoop whoop whoop. I think you'll agree then, my creation is perfect. Because of this, I was pretty confident that I'd already completed my goal. That is, until I stumbled across some unwelcome faces. The human race. Forever have humans looked down upon monkey kind, and here they were again, staring us straight in our monkey faces. As brutal as always, the humans began to attack, and a chase scene followed. My gibbon was only just able to escape with his life. It seemed I had been overconfident. The humans would be a big hurdle on our way to world domination. There were many things the gibbons needed to improve, but the first and most important thing was agility. To do this, I gave him feet that could jump. This worked perfectly. Now, if he saw a human, he could simply jump over them. And not only did his jumping improve, but by proxy, his dancing got better as well. Still a little bit of work to do on the spinning though. With all these improvements made, I tested out my new gibbons by beating up a nest of aggressive plums. But I still felt we weren't quite good enough. Something was wrong. And then, it hit me. In real life, gibbons don't really have feet. They kind of have hands on their feet, it's crazy. I was sure this would sort everything out, but instead, it, it just made him float? My gibbon was now somehow hovering through the air, and oh god, what is that? What is he doing? No, 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 this isn't right. It was back to the drawing board again, and I decided this time to move up the tier list. Next in line was the ring-tailed lemur. Lemurs are famous for being stripy and jumping around a lot, so it's safe to say I had very high hopes. As it turns out though, they aren't very easy to recreate in Spore. Regardless of how awful they look though, the ring-tailed lemurs were an improvement, proving better at jumping and dancing than the gibbons. Because of this, I thought I might as well test my strength against the humans, but after a bit of travelling around, the humans were nowhere to be seen. And to be honest, the lemurs' eyes were making me feel a bit unnerved, so I decided to move up the tier list once again, and make a baboon. Baboons are beautiful creatures, and it's safe to say my creation was no different. But as I was admiring my baboon's proud backside, I finally spotted them once again. This time, the humans stood no chance. The baboons obliterated them like a knife through butter, and before long, the human race was extinct. Well, that was easy. Now that those pesky humans are out of the way, my journey towards world domination would be smooth sailing. I guess I might as well have finished the challenge now. Hang on. What are these? The eye monkey. It seemed that there were other monkey species out there competing with me for top spot. And what's more, they were stronger than me as well. My journey wouldn't be so simple after all, and I once again was forced to move up the monkey tier list. Next on the agenda was chimpanzees, and again, I'm gonna level with you here, I don't think I exactly nailed this one. I don't know what chimpanzees you've seen before, but I can probably say with certainty that they didn't look like this. The chimpanzees lost to the other monkeys as well, and this got me thinking, maybe realism just wasn't my strong point. I mean, clearly. So why remain in reality? Why not begin to look to the monkeys of fiction? And next up in the tier list was the perfect candidate, 
Boots from the Dora the Explorer TV series. My recreation of Boots was adorable. Just the cutest and most lovable guy you've ever seen. I was certain that if the other monkeys didn't die of adorableness overload first, then Boots would certainly have them beaten anyway. And it started really well. One of the other monkeys went down, and then another. But Boots fell agonizingly short. And once again, it was back to square one. Now I was angry. Nobody takes down Boots and gets away with it. It was time to take things extra seriously. And I did so by conjuring up one of my greatest monkey designs yet. Straight out of B tier, it was the Emperor Tamarin. With its beautiful moustache, the Tamarin was super powerful, and on top of that it had great dance moves. The Tamarin was the complete package, and it was so powerful in fact, that when I came to challenge the other monkeys once more, they just ran away. Well, that's no fun, I thought. I guess the Tamarin is just too intimidating, and in some way, I felt I had lost the essence of what a monkey really should be. The perfect monkey is not only powerful, but is approachable, fun, a barrel of laughs. If I could create a happy medium between strong and silly, the greatest monkey would be created. And as I moved up the tier list once more, the perfect specimen presented itself. The orangutan. How could I have been so stupid? Everyone loves orangutans, but they're also super powerful. I mean, remember that one from Life of Pi that beat up a tiger? I was gonna make the ultimate orangutan. And I don't just mean any orangutan, I'm talking like one of them ones with the pizza dish faces. Like one of them ones that looks like it's swallowed a frying pan. Not only this, but I would combine all I had learnt so far, and give him hands for feet so he could float around like the zen omniscient monkey being he was always meant to be. It was glorious. This was the creature I had been searching for. It was so powerful, in fact, that it managed to wipe out the other monkey tribe with one fell swoop. And now that they were out of the way, nothing could stop me. I went around the world taking out any life form that looked even vaguely monkey-like. I would be the only one! I was on a roll! And then... Oh look, some sort of pear seems to be flying through the sky. Huh. Weird. <clears throat> Taking over the world would be an easy task with these powerful, powerful orangutans. And then... <gasps> no way! The human race had survived. Well, not for much longer. Not if I can help it. I would take them out here and now, once and for all. The orangutans attack with the combined power of the whole monkey tier list put together, making sure this time to wipe out the humans for good. Finally... It was time to move into tribal stage. Now, at last, I could set up my kingdom of orangutans in peace. I'll invite all of the other orangutans from around the planet, I thought, and we will all live in harmony. In fact, oh look, this must be some of them now. Wait, what? What is this? But I defeated all of the humans. How can there be more? Wait, there's loads more? Oh my goodness, there's thousands of them! What do you mean there's seven billion of them?